Good morning children. Today we shall learn about the blood and the transport system in our body. We already know the digestive system digests the food required for our growth and energy. Also, lungs take in oxygen which is also required by our body. What if oxygen and food didn't reach the other parts of our body? All the organs and the cells need oxygen and food. So our body requires a transport system to deliver these to all the organs, all the cells. Not just for this, respiration and many other activities occur in the cells and the other organs. And many harmful substances are produced in this processes. For example, carbon dioxide. What if these harmful things stayed inside the cells and other organs? Obviously, it would be very harmful to our body. So again, transport system is required to take these harmful substances to the proper place just like the garbage truck takes the garbage to the treatment or the disposal plant. So, we must have a great transport system to deliver the oxygen and food to all the cells and also to collect the generated waste from there. Yes, it is the blood which transports the substances like the digested food from the small intestine to the other parts of the body. It also carries oxygen from the lungs to the cells of the body. It also transports waste for the removal from the body. And who carries the blood? In our body, the blood is the fluid which flows in the blood vessels. What is blood? When you get a cut on your body, it is the blood which flows out. And it just looks like red water or red fluid. You know, blood is a liquid which has cells of various kinds suspended in it. What is so special about it? And how can it carry various substances? Let us understand. First, let us see what all cells the blood carries. The fluid part of the blood is called plasma. It is straw colored, clear liquid. You know, 55% of the blood is just made of liquid plasma. And the rest 45% is blood cells. Most of the plasma fluid is just water. More than 90% of plasma is water. If plasma is straw colored, then how is the blood red? Well, it is because of one type of blood cells, the red blood cells or RBC in short. The RBCs are like flat disc-like with little depression in the center. RBC contains a red pigment hemoglobin which is the reason for red color of the blood. Just like chlorophyll is the reason for green color of the leaves in the plants. Hemoglobin not only makes the blood red, it binds with the oxygen and transports it to all the parts of the body and ultimately to all the cells efficiently. You must have heard when a person becomes weak and gets tired quickly, people say he might be anemic and is asked to get the blood test done. Why? In anemia disease, the amount of hemoglobin reduces. Hence, the person feels weak as the blood couldn't carry much of oxygen to the organs and to the cells for respiration. So, hemoglobin is very important. It is made of iron. So, do remember to take right amount of iron mineral through the food to remain fit and energetic. Now, you must have also heard that our body can fight against microbes. Who or what fights against these? WBC or the white blood cells in the blood. Few WBCs just eat the germs and few WBCs release chemicals which destroys harmful substances from the germs like bacteria and virus. So we can say white blood cells are like soldiers in our body. 
When we get a cut, the blood flows out of the body and after some times the bleeding stops. A dark red clot plugs the cut. How? It's because of a kind of blood cell which are platelets. These are colorless with irregular shape, even smaller than the red blood cells. We know for good transport, good roads are required. A road which connects all the destination. Road for transportation inside our body is the blood vessels. The blood flows through these pipe-like vessels. The heart pumps the blood and the blood starts flowing through the blood vessels. The vessels which carry blood away from the heart are called arteries. The arteries take blood to the different organs just like the truck which unloads its load at the destination and then gets loaded again with other things. Now the blood returns to the heart again. Vessels which carry blood to the heart are called veins. The veins have thin walls. You know there are walls present in the veins which allow the blood to flow only towards the heart. Now what is the difference between an artery and the vein? Arteries have thicker walls than the veins and they are deeply placed inside the skin. Veins are superficially placed that is not so deep in the body. You know the blood flows through artery under very high pressure which is caused by the pumping of heart. As the blood travels more this pressure gets reduced so the pressure inside the vein is much lower. Now, how do cells get oxygen and food? The arteries get divided into extremely thin walled narrow blood vessels and they are called capillaries. The walls of capillaries are so thin that the gas, chemicals etc can diffuse into the cell and also the gas chemicals from the cells enter the blood. Thus capillaries form a web like network to reach the maximum cells. Capillaries join together to form veins. So to summarize the blood contains plasma the straw colored clear liquid and many blood cells are suspended into it the RBC, WBC and platelets. The red color of the blood is due to the RBC and RBC contains a red pigment called hemoglobin. It is the hemoglobin which binds with oxygen and transports it to all the parts of our body. Next WBC. The WBC or the white blood cell fight against the germs that may enter our body. And lastly the platelets which clot the blood and prevent excessive bleeding in case of cut etc. And coming to the blood circulation, the blood flows inside the blood vessels. There are two types of blood vessels, arteries and veins. The arteries take blood from the heart to the different organs and the veins carry blood back to the heart. The arteries divide into extremely thin tubes called capillaries and the capillaries join up to form veins. Thus, capillaries form a web-like network to reach maximum cells. So what are the functions performed by the blood? The blood carries or transports the food and oxygen to each body cell. It also helps in removal of waste products as it carries away the waste products to the organs such as kidneys, lungs and intestine from where they are excreted out of the body. The blood protects the body against infection by destroying the germs. The blood also helps in blood clotting thereby preventing excessive blood loss. And lastly, the blood also regulates the body temperature. So now you know about blood and the transport system in our body. That's all for now. Bye bye children.